So, let us continue with the example uh, that will illustrate the use of the butterfly. We consider the barbell strategy consisting of long positions in two bonds S and L with equal money weights INR 1000 of 1 year and 9 year 0 coupon bonds. So, this is the constitution of the barbell and we have a short body. The short body is a 0 coupon bond that is a liability M of INR 4022.71 at t equal to 5 years. All the bonds are trading at a YTM of 15 percent per annum. So, if you work out the value of this liability at t equal to 0 that is today it turns out to be exactly 2000 that is equal to the investment that is required for the long barbell. In other words by shorting this particular bond of value uh, 2000 at t equal to 0, the proceeds that we are getting are deployed by uh, investing in the barbell strategy. All the bonds are trading at a YTM of 15 percent per annum. Assume that there is an instantaneous non parallel shift of the yield curve due to which with the spot rates change as follows S01 is equal to 15 percent, S05 is equal to 18 percent, S09 is equal to 15 percent. So, the t equal to 0 spot rates, the initial spot rates were uh, 15 percent for all maturities uh, that is uh, indicated by this YTM of 15 percent for all the bonds and then and there, there is a shift in the yield curve as a consequence of which while the short and long end rates remain unchanged, the mi mid, uh, middle rate increases by from 15 percent to 18 percent, the intermediate rate increases from 15 percent to 18 percent. So, let us evaluate the strategy. For the S bond that is the short maturity bond, what we the value of the bond turns out is 1000 at uh, uh, t equal to 0 and for the long maturity bond also it is 1000 we know that and for therefore, the value of the barbell before the shift is equal to 2000 and the value of the mid, mid, mid maturity bond is equal to 1758.36 after the shift. Before the shift as I mentioned it was 2000, uh, after the shift it has changed to 1758.36. Please note uh, this very important point that there is no change in the uh, in the 1 year and the 9 year rates and consequently these values of 1000 before the shift and 1000 before the shift for the short maturity bond and the long maturity bond comprising the barbell remain the same at the after the shift. So, after the shift P S is continues to be 1000, after the shift P L continues to be 1000 and P barbell is equal to 2000 after the shift as well. However, P M which was 2000 before the shift has declined to 1758.36 after the shift then thereby leading to a profit or a portfolio in appreciation in value of 241.64. Further, larger the value of H05 greater will be the curvature of the yield, yield curve no, uh, spot yield curve rather uh, lesser will be P m and larger will be the portfolio value. So, if the 18 percent figure that we have assumed for H05, if we assume it to be 24 percent or so, this figure will increase further. So, that is how the strategy of a butterfly operates which has a long uh, position in the barbell and a short position in the uh, body or the bullet. Now, conduct trades. A uh, conduct trades are a variant of the butterfly strategy. Conduct trades work the same and are evaluated the same as butterfly trades. The only modification is that two positions with relatively close duration are used for the bullet. For example, a super bullet butterfly could be constructed as long the 7 duration and short the 3 and 11 duration wings. A condor is similar, but could use an equal weighted combination of long the 6.5 and 7.5 duration instead of a single long 7 duration portfolio. The wings would remain as short the 3 and 11 duration. So, it is a 
minor variation of the butterfly strategy. The butterfly strategy usually has a bullet in the middle. The body is a bullet strategy either long or short, uh, but uh, in the case of condor traits, uh, the body comprises usually of two, two bonds identical positions either long or short and of very closely matched durations although not exactly matched durations. Miscellaneous depth instruments, we shall be talking about capped and float floaters in this section. A floating rate bond, a floater, pays a coupon that adjusts every period based on an underlying reference rate. So, so far you see what we have been talking about the bonds uh, or the depth instruments that we have been talking about are fixed rate instruments in which the rate of interest is, uh, is incorporated in the offer document in the issue document and the manner of uh, payment of the interest is also mentioned in the issue document. It is fixed, the timing is fixed, the frequency is fixed, the amount is also fixed or the percentage is also fixed and specified in the offer document. However, um, um, we also have floating rate instruments in which the interest rate is not fixed. However, the method of computation of the interest, the interest rate is usually tagged to another market variable and the method of computation of the uh, interest given the uh, value or the given the progress or given the evolution of the tagged variable uh, is uh, given in the issue document. How, what is the relationship? How would we calculate the rate of interest given the value of the tagged variable um, is uh, given in the offer document. Usually floating rate bonds are issued with, ref with a reference rate which is usually the London interbank offer rate, the LIBOR rate. So, depending on the evolution of the LIBOR rate, the rate for a particular period is fixed. The Usually the practice is that the first rate would be fixed at t equal to 0, it would operate for the first period of 6 months. The payment would be made on the basis of the rate fixed at t equal to 0, at t equal to 6 months. Then at t equal to 6 months, the rate for the period from t equal to 6 months to t equal to 12 months will be fixed. It will be fixed at t equal to 6 months, the payment will be made at t equal to 12 months and so on. This will be the progression. The rates are fixed in advance and the payment of interest is made in arrears. That is the standard practice in so far as floating rate instruments are concerned. But the important thing is why it is called floating is because the rate is fixed at the commencement of each interest period. Uh, it be if it is a 6 month period at the commencement of each 6 month period, if it is a annual frequency bond, it will be fixed at the beginning of each year for the for the that particular year, but the actual payment of interest will be made at the end of the year. The coupon is typically paid in arrears, meaning that the coupon rate is determined at the beginning of a period what is paid at the end of that period. Floating rate bond valuation. Now, this is interesting. Consider a floating rate bond with a notional principle of n currency units. Let us consider the valuation of bond at an arbitrary time small t. Let t0 be the first reset date of the bond after t at which the floating rate for the period t0 to t1. So, please note at t0 we are fixing the interest rate that would operate for the period from T0 to T1. At T1, the actual interest would be paid and the next, the interest rate for the next period from T1 to T2 will be fixed at T1 and this process will continue until the life of the bond. The floating rate for the period T0 to T1 is fixed. The first payment from the bond is made at T1. So, the rate is fixed in advance at T0, the rate is paid, the interest is paid in arrears at T1 and this process continues for the next period and every subsequent period up to the life of the bond. Thereafter, the rate is reset at T1 for the period T1 to T2 and the next payment is made at T2 again fixed in advance and paid in arrears. But the, please note the rate is not fixed over the entire life of the instrument. This is the difference. The rate is fixed from period to period. For each interest rate pe interest period, the rate is fixed again and again and again. Uh, however, for the fixed rate bond, the rate is fixed once and for all over the entire life of the bond. And the next payment is made at T2 and so on. The final payment is made at Tn, which is the maturity of the bond. Let us assume the, let us look at the first case. The valuation of the bond is at a point which is either earlier than or at the point of the first reset. 
I repeat the date of valuation of the bond is either earlier than either prior to or on the date of the first reset that is what is meaning of this expression. So, consider the following strategy at t equal to t that is the point at which we are doing the valuation by capital N units where what is N? N is the notional principle of the of the bond by N bonds each of face value 1 unit and maturity at t 0 by N bonds each of face value 1 currency unit which is also its maturity value. Please note this we are buying N units each of face value 1 currency units which also happens to be its maturity value that is it is redeemed at face value that is to say and maturity at t 0 for a price of p small t comma t 0. Okay. So, the cash outflow at time t is n into number of bonds into the price per bond that is n into p t comma t 0. The cash inflow at time t 0 is what? It is equal to n because each bond is going to give you a cash inflow of 1 unit, the face value is 1 unit, the redemption is at face value. So, the redemption value is also 1 unit and that means for n bonds you are going to get a payment of n. We can use this cash n which we get from redeeming of this investment, this investment. When we redeem this investment at t equal to t 0, we get n and we can use this n for buying another set of bonds. How many bonds? n divided by p t 0 comma t 1. What is p t 0 comma t 1? p t 0 comma t 1 is the price of one bond of face value 1 unit at t equal to t 0 which will mature for payment at t equal to t 1. Let me repeat what is p t 0 t 1? p t 0 t 1 is the price of one bond of face value 1 unit that at the point in time t equal to t 0 when that bond is redeemable at t equal to t 1 at its face value of 1 unit that is p t 0 t 1 and n is the amount of money that we have price of one bond is this much. So, I can buy these many uh, units of uh, the bond which will uh, which will uh, at t equal to t 0 which will mature at t equal to t 1. So, at t equal to t 1 what is the cash flow? The t at t equal to t 1 the cash flow will be equal to n this much divided by p t 0 t 1 because this is the number of bonds and each bond has a face value of 1. So, at maturity it will give you 1 unit of currency and because you have this number of bonds the total currency that you are going to get is equal to this much and this can be written in this form. There is an objective of writing it in this form which will be clear in the next slide. Now, out of this cash flow, which cash flow? This cash flow, this which can be written in this form n upon p t 1 comma t 2 bonds of unit face value maturing at t 2. This, this amount, this n that is here, uh, you see let me go back. This n, n the, this n that you have is deployed for a fresh investment. Fresh investment of what? n divided by p t 1 comma t 2 number of bonds. What is p t 1 comma t 2? p t 1 comma t 2 is the price of a one bond of face value 1 unit redeemable at 1 unit at t equal to t 1 when the redemption is going to occur at t equal to t 2. The value of that bond, the price of that bond is p t 1 comma t 2 and you use this n amount uh, for buying fresh bonds uh, for uh, rolling over the investment in a sense. And the, the remaining quantity which is the remaining quantity? This is the remaining quantity and what is this remaining quantity? Let us look at it carefully. This remaining quantity can be written in this form n into 1 minus p t 0 t 1 divided by p t 0 t 1. What is this? 1 is the redemption value of the instrument, p t 0 t 1 is the purchase price. So, redemption value minus purchase price divided by purchase price, this is the return on one bond 
and if you have n units this is the total return this is the total return for the period t0 to t1 so this represents the floating rate interest at the rate fixed at t equal to t0 for on the principal n for the period t0 to t1 so this amount as you can see here the redemption value minus initial value divided by initial value this is the percentage operated on the total investment that is n and you get the total uh, interest which is which represents the floating rate interest the interest that was calculated at t equal to t0 for the period t0 to t1 on the principle of n uh, for the period t0 to t1 thus the strategy completely replicates the cash flows from the floating rate bond as you can see here it's the if you are investing in a floating rate bond, uh, you would uh, get exactly the same amount of money. Uh, hence, by no arbitrage, the cost of the strategy must equal the value of the floating rate bond. And what is the cost of the strategy? It is equal to n p t z comma t zero. So, this is the value of the floating rate bond at t equal to small t. Um, when the first reset date is at t equal to t0. So, this is the value of the floating rate bond at t equal to small t when the t small t is less than or equal to uh, t0 that is it is either before or at the reset date. And if t is equal to t0 that is the value of the bond at t equal to t0 at the first reset date then this turns out to be equal to n which is the face value of the floating rate bond. So, very important inference that we have is at the first reset date the value of the floating rate bond is equal to its face value. Then we look at the second case uh, T 0 less than T less than T 1 that is valuation of the floating rate bond between two reset dates. The cash flow receivable from the bond at T 1 includes the notional principle and the floating rate interest for the period T 0 to T 1 at the floating rate R 0 1 which is set at T equal to T 0 applicable for the period T to T 0. Hence, the total cash flow at T 1 is equal to this is this portion is the principle and this is the interest n multiplied by this gives you the interest and n is the principal amount. Thus, the number of unit value bonds to be invested at in at t is equal to n into this much. The total cash flow that you are receiving is invested in unit face value bond. This remember this is the cash flow that you receive at t equal to t 1 t equal to t 1 and this the number of bonds that you need to invest is in this, am, is this amount to replicate the floating bonds cash flow. And the investment is going to occur at small t, where what is small t? Small t is some point between t0 and t1, and this delta is the day count fraction. Let me quickly go through it again. The cash flow that is receivable at the bond uh, from the bond at t1 includes the notional principle and the floating rate interest for the period t0 to t1, and that amount in this is the rate. This rate is fixed at what? This rate is fixed at t0, and this rate applies from t0 to t1. So the total cash flow that you have here is at t1 is equal to n into 1 plus r floating 0 to 1 into delta where delta is the day count fraction. Therefore, the number of units of face value bonds that you need to be in that you need to invest at small t so that you get this cash flow. So, you are you see you are replicating the cash flow from the floating rate bond at t equal to t 1 and the floating rate bond is giving you a cash flow equal to this amount. So, the number of unit value unit maturity value unit redemption value bonds that you need to buy in order that the yield cash flow of this amount at t equal to t equal to capital T 1 is equal to this amount. So, and the price of this, this, this the cost of investing in this, this number of bonds at t equal to small t is given by this quantity. Why? Because one bond would cost you p t comma t 1, which bond face value 1 unit, redemption value 1 unit price at t equal to small t and the redemption at t equal to t 1. So, this would be the also the value of the floating rate bond at 
small t where small t lies between t0 and t1. Now, we talk about a capped floater. A capped floater effectively contains an issuer option that prevents the coupon rate from rising above a specified maximum rate known as the cap. Value of a cap floater is equal to value of the straight floater minus value of the embedded cap. Why minus? Because the issuer has retained an option or issuer has this prerogative, issuer has the privilege that the interest rate on that floater will not surpass, will not go beyond the rate of interest, will not go beyond a certain rate, will not increase beyond a certain rate. It is capped at a certain rate. Therefore, it operates to the benefit of the issuer and because it operates to the benefit of the issuer, the issuer pays the price for that and that mm, therefore, this is the the value of the embedded cap is deducted when we value ca a capped floater. And similarly, in the case of a floored floater, the value of the floored floater is added to the value of the straight one. Why? Because in this case, the, the uh, investor has the advantage. What is a floored floater? A floored floater has a downside cut, a downside truncation that the interest rate, uh, if the floating rate interest rate falls below the uh, the, uh, the floor, uh, floor the, then the investor will st still get the floor. Let me repeat, if the interest rate falls below the floor, the investor would still get the floor rate. So, it operates to the benefit of the investor and therefore, the investor pays a price for this and as a result of which when you value a floor floater, it is equal to the value of the straight bond without the floating of without the floor option. Uh, plus the embedded value of the floater. Let me repeat, when we talk about a floating rate instrument, which is floored, we are talking about a bond, which has a floating rate plus, which also has a truncation that if the flo flo floating rate falls below the floor, then the rate would be, rate would be fixed at the floor and not the floating rate. Valuation of a capped and floored floater. We can use the standard backward induction methodology in a binomial interest rate tree to value a capped or float floater. As with the valuation of a bond with embedded options, we must adjust the value of the floater at each node to reflect the exercise of an in the money option. Let us do an example. Consider a dollar hundred par two year floating rate note that pays LIBOR set in arrears. The underlying bond has the same credit quality as reflected in the LIBOR swap curve. The two year binomial tree is given. This is the two year binomial tree. Compute the value, the value of the floater assuming that it is an option free bond, the value of the floater assuming that it is capped at a rate of 6 percent. Also compute the value of the embedded cap and similarly number 3, the value of the floater assuming that it is floored at a rate of 5 percent also compute the value of the embedded floor solution. The option free bond with a coupon rate equal to the required rate of return will be worth par value as we have just seen. Hence, the straight value of the floater is dollar 100. Right? So, as far as the straight value of the straight bond is concerned, it is being valued at t, t equal to 0 uh, and at the uh, commencement of, in fact, at the commencement of each interest period, the value of the floater will be equal to, will be equal to what? Will be equal to its face value. So, that is not an issue. Now, we look at the capped floater. The cap is at 6 percent. Now, we look at the figures very carefully. The interest rate, when we talk about this particular branch, when we, when we talk about this, the interest rate is given as 7.1826 percent, but the interest rate is capped at 6 percent. Therefore, uh, when we talk about the valuation calculating the cash flow at this point, uh, it would be the principal value, the redemption value that is 100 plus interest on that at 6 percent, not at 7.1826 percent. That is where the capping comes into play. The, the binomial tree interest rate for the calculation of interest at this node is equal to 7.1826 percent. But when we look at the cap of 6 percent, this interest must be cut down, must be truncated to 6 percent and the investor would be paid interest only at 6 percent. 
so the amount that would be discounted when we move from here to here is 106 and 106 uh, is when discounted will give you 98.90 now we look at the next next uh, tree in the second case because the interest rate operating is 5.32 percent which is below the cap if the interest rate turns out to be 5.32 percent it is below the cap so we shall be paid interest rate at this amount 5.32 and therefore the amount that needs to be discounted is 105.32 as you can see here it is 105.32 and then when 105.32 is discounted at 5.32 percent you get exactly 100 here what were, uh, let me repeat in the case of the first node that is the upper node the amount to be discounted was 106 discounted at 7.1826 percent and that gives us a figure of uh, uh, 98.90 so repeat once again the 100 is the face value the 6 is the interest rate which would operate in view of this cap in view of the cap of 6 percent the interest rate which is actually the floating rate interest is 7.18 percent but it will not operate or it will only the 6 percent will operate and therefore I will get a coupon of 6 percent total 106 but the discounting would be done at 7.1826 percent and this value will be 98.90 and because the rate at uh, given in the first uh, node is 4.57 percent which is below 6 percent the interest rate at this point will be 4.57 percent and then the entire thing 98.90 plus 4.57 will be discounted at 4.5749 percent. Sim uh, similarly for the lower branch of the tree um, the cap will not operate because the interest rate is how much interest rate is 5.32 percent and therefore the coupon will be paid at 4 at 5.32 percent and we will have 105.32 discount it at 5.32 percent that gives you 100 then you discount then you the interest for, for, for the period from t equal to 0 to t equal to 1 would be at uh, 4.57 percent and the total amount that would be discounted it uh, would be 104 0.57 discounted at 4.57 percent we will take the average of these two and that would be the value of the mm, mm, uh, capped floater and that would be 99.47. So, that is what is given here 100 plus 6 this is the catch this is where the, the cap is coming into play and please note that discounting rate is not capped the discounting rate is the actual rate please note this point very carefully that discounting rate is not capped it is the actual rate and this gives you 98.90 in this case the cap does not operate because the rate is below the cap rate of 6 percent and therefore when you discount this we have 100 here so these are the values at the upper node and the lower node at t equal to 1 and then we go to t equal to 0 when we evaluate at t equal to 0 the interest rate is 4.57 percent so this is 4.57 coupon payment this is 4.57 coupon payment this is the value at uh, v 1 u this is v 1 l and we take the average and we dis please note the discount rate the discount rate is also uh, 4.57 percent and that gives us a value of 99.47. So, this is how the value of the cap can be calculated. The value of the valuing a floor is pretty much similar it is an identical exercise. In this case wherever the rate is below the floor we, uh, we use the floor as the appropriate rate. I repeat wherever the rate is below the floor. So, where will that floor operate? The floor will operate here in this case because the floor is at 5 percent the rate given is 4.57 percent. So, instead of using 4.57 percent we shall use a rate of 5 percent and the rest of it will rem remain the same uh, the coupon is paid at uh, 7.28 7.18 percent here. So, the total payment is 107.18 and the discounting is at 7.18 percent. So, what we get is 100 and then when we calculate the coupon rate it is not at 4.57 percent it is at 5 percent which is the floor rate and so we get 
100 plus 5 that is 105 and we discount it at 4.57 percent similarly in this case it is 100 plus 5.32 that 5.32 is above the flow rate so it is 105.32 105.32 is uh, uh, and then uh, it is discounted at 5.32 so that gives us 100 again and then we have the coupon rate uh, for the period 0 to 1 which is not 4.57 which is 5 percent because this is less than 5 percent and therefore the total value is 105 we discount it at 4.57 percent we take the average of the two values that is the value of the flowed you can see here the floor is operating at this point and at this point uh, the rest is straightforward. Please note we take the averages uh, because we assume that the probability of the up move and the down move of the interest rate tree is the same. Then we have some examples which I will put in the notes. Uh, in the next lecture we will start with derivatives. Thank you.